Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous. And in today's video, we're going to go over some of the more advanced features in Inkscape and Inkstitch and show you how to do it. So stick around to see how we do it. our Inkscape and Inkstitch part one tutorial, go ahead and check that out at the iCard above because that goes over more of the basics and more of what you need to know like from downloading and installing to like actually making it. This is more of like a tips and tricks video and more advanced type of stuff. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to use the trace of bitmap feature, how to adjust your design for different types of stitches and creating a custom satin stitch. The trace of bitmap feature essentially is letting the software trace over a design that you bring in from an image. So instead of having to manually go around a design with the Bezier tool, you can just have the software trace it out for you. So you're saying I've spent so many hours tracing it out with the Bezier tool when it could have done it automatically the whole entire time? Yes. Now there are some nuances with this and that's what we'll, we'll show you. So let's get to it. All right. Let's try to find an image that we can copy and bring over into Inkscape. So we just went to a non copyright clip art page and we decided to go with this. Holly? Is that what it's called? Or mistletoe. Mistletoe? We'll call it mistletoe. And we downloaded it. So we have that ready to go. Now we'll go ahead and open up Inkscape. And if you recall from our last video, we're going to go ahead and open up from a template. So the first thing we're going to do is import our image into Inkscape. And we do that by going to File and Import. Okay. And in our Downloads folder is right there. Okay, we'll drag it into our work area. And if you recall from our last video, to keep it from distorting like this, we can hit Control while scaling our option to keep it the same parameters in the X and Y axis. And that looks like a good size right there, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so now we have an image in here that in previous videos we've shown you how to basically just trace over this. But what if we just let Inkscape do it? So we're gonna go up to Path, Trace Bitmap, and you can see here, it's traced it out for us based off of the the brightness and it's using brightness as a determination of it should if it should be filled or not so we can adjust this by hitting update and changing some of these settings to get the result that we want and i think that's perfect right there so we're going to hit and I'll hit update again to make sure we're good i'm going to hit okay and then i'm going to close this out now you may be thinking there's nothing there, but if you click on the image and drag it off, you can see now I have a nice traced image of the outline of this. Uh, Mistletoe slash holly? Yeah, of this image. So the difference is this is an SVG. You can see all of the nodes right there, which means it's an SCG that, uh, SVG that can be adjusted um, whereas this is just a picture. So the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how you can do this in color as well. So I've got this one safely moved off to the side. I'll move it off a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and click on our image again. And we'll go to Path, Trace Bitmap. And this time we're gonna use the Multi-Scan option. And instead of brightness as our uh, determining um, Factor. factor. We're going to go ahead and click on colors and see if we can get this to scan a colored SVG of this image. So we'll go ahead and click update. And look at that. That's cool. Yep. So we'll click OK. This is now an SVG. How do you get rid of the white? Like... Um, good question. We'll just have to delete those nodes and then the white should go away. So the next thing we're going to do is start moving things in the layers that will be helpful for us. So 
Let's start creating layers here. So now without any tracing at all, we've created the outline of our design and we can just fill it with color by using the fill tool. And do you just select the click color on, you want? Click on the color. You. And I'm gonna fill it in. Now you will notice that this isn't perfectly lined up. When we zoom in here, it is not all the way to the edge, but we can adjust that to make sure we're not going to get any gaps in our... Do you just go to uh, the notes? Or like right here? Um, we could, or we could just scale up this by hitting control and dragging this out. Smart. You can scale this up and then adjust it. Because essentially what Inkstitch did when you put this fill layer in is you created a new object. So it's completely independent of the outline here. But that's how you could adjust it to get it right up to the lines. Uh, but I'm not gonna focus on that so much. Um, so what is this gonna look like if we embroidered this just like this? Yeah, so we got lucky in that we didn't get an error here uh, not allowing us to continue in embroidering this uh, particular object. So. If you do get a fault when opening up params, there may be something you can try to fix it. Remember that when we imported this design and turned it into an SVG, it's made up of a bunch of different nodes. And we can use a tool in Inkscape called Simplify that will reduce the number of nodes and maybe make it so that params will open. To do that, we go to Path and Simplify. And you can see that the number of nodes has dramatically decreased. However, note that your design detail may decrease as a result of this. Remember, the more complex your design is, the more errors you may encounter in Inkstitch params. One of the common things that we get is where these corners kind of cross over themselves. We discussed briefly in the last video, but let me show you what that little adjustment did. So this is the error that we mentioned uh, that can happen in the edges or sharp corners of a design. And it unfortunately is seen a lot when you do the trace bitmap feature. What we typically do when we come across this particular error is we'll start by selecting individual objects in our design. So for instance, uh, we're, we would click just this particular leaf and then we would do a params check. And if this stitches out, we know the issue is not with this particular object. So you can see this is working. Again, this is why ink stitch can be very frustrating. <laughs> Again, we know where the issue is because we created it, but it typically happens in your corners. Small adjustments will usually fix it. And let's go look at what this would look like if we actually embroidered it. So this is what we could expect this design with very little modification to look like. And you can see there's only a few areas where we would expect to see some gaps uh, in the design. But the other thing to note, uh, the way that this uh, trace bitmap feature works is unlike with you drawing your design, this particular outside edge that you would expect to be a satin stitch isn't. It's actually a fill stitch because it's just traced the inner and outer sides of this outline. So there's really no way uh, to make this a satin stitch other than uh, essentially modifying the design a bit. And we'll show you uh, how we do that pretty easily um, that maybe will give you a better result. But honestly, this doesn't look too bad if we just kept it like this. Mm -hmm. But we'll go ahead and show you now how we turn 
a tracing uh, to where we can get the outer edge a satin stitch. So the next thing we're going to show you is adjusting your design to get different types of stitches when you embroider. So to make your satin stitch edge around here instead of this black being a fill stitch uh, is actually pretty simple and we've already done most of the work by filling in the areas with color. Just delete the outline. Now this doesn't look good, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> but what we can do is around each object is add a stroke. So we do that by pressing shift and th in this case we want the stroke to be black. So we're going to hit shift and then click on black. And we can see now, now this black, well we can adjust that, but this black will be a, it will stitch out as a satin stitch. And you can see it's not perfect, but in an embroidery project, it may be enough to get you through. So now all of these black areas are going to stitch out as a satin stitch around our fill layer, but we may have an issue with the order. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and click everything and let's go into our params to see how this is going to stitch out in which order. So here's the issue. You can see that it is stitching out the satin stitch first and then it's sewing the fill layer on top of it. And that's not good. Not good. But just like the last video, all we have to do is copy all of this, Command C and Command V. And then what we'll do is on this one, we're going to remove the fill layer of all the objects by clicking on this X. And now I just have my outline and we're going to move this into a, the satin stitch layer. Move to layer, satin stitch, it's already there, move. But on this one, and instead of hitting X, which would remove the color, we're gonna hit Shift X, which will remove all the black outline. <laughs> and we're gonna move this to the fill layer. So we know this will sew first. Now we have two separate layers, the fill layer on the bottom and the satin stitch on top. Let's see how Params handles it now. Now you can see the fill layer is filling in first. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's close out of this and let's see what this would actually look like in our simulator. This is what it would look like with a satin stitch around it versus our other design. Now, in this, in this particular case, this does not look so great. So I would prefer to go with this one here, but that's obviously it's, it's gonna be nice. design specific and choose what works best for you and your design. Now, one other thing we can show you to get maybe a little more pop in the differences in the stitches is we can change the orientation of your fill stitch by every object. So we could actually change the fill stitch to go a certain direction for this leaf and go a different direction for this leaf here. Mm -hmm. So we can try that. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna click on each of these leaves. I'm just hitting shift to select multiple parts of the leaf and I'm going to go into params and I'm going to change the angle of the lines to stitch. And for this one, I'm just going to do 45. So you can see now the fill stitch goes in a different orientation. Let me hit apply and quit. All right. So that's what it looks like with different angled stitches. Now we could have done a better job at orienting the fill layers uh, better on the leaves to give it a more realistic view, but you can see there's going to be a different, a slightly different uh, bit of shininess to the thread in the different orientations that may give your design a more realistic view. So the last thing we're going to show you is how to make a custom satin stitch.
Right, we're going to show you how to use your current design and kind of create the shiny layers of a custom satin stitch throughout to give it the look that one would expect from an embroidery project. There's not just a simple button you can click to create a custom satin stitch. Um, you actually have to do some work in kind of creating a railroad track, so to speak, uh, where you want the satin stitch to go and in what orientation. What I'm gonna actually be doing is replacing the fill-in layer of this leaf here with what you need to do for a custom satin stitch. And again, you need the Bezier tool. I'm gonna to go and zoom in here. Now this is all gonna be covered by, these edges are gonna be covered by your uh, outside layer, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It's gotta be close though. And I'm just gonna put it right there, one line. So that's one leg of my railroad track, and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it. So that's one leg of my railroad track, or one rail. Now I'm gonna create another rail, like that. Easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. So the next part, you just have to cross over both of these legs to show the orientation. Do we want the satin stitch to go this way or this way? And I think, obviously, we want it to go this way. So we just cross over the design and we're gonna do at least two of these, but the more you put, the more accurate each of these uh, railroad ties are going to give the orientation of your satin stitch. The last thing you have to do is you have to combine all of these uh, together. So once you got all of the track pieces selected, you can either go to path combine or you can hit command K on a Mac or control K on a PC. Now it turns it into one object. So that's all we'll do for now. I just want to show you what this will look like. Before you go back in to embroider, we have to do a, a setting change in our params. So now I have it selected. Go to ink, extensions, ink stitch, and params. And for this one object, I'm gonna go over to satin column, and I'm gonna click on custom satin stitch. And you can see now my leaf is gonna sew like that. And we'll see what this looks like in the realistic simulator. And now you can see how this look is slightly different than everything else. And if you get the angles right on each of these sides of the leaf, it could look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it'll give it a little bit more dimension. Yeah, it'll give it more dimension. So when you think of I don't know if you were going to do feathers on a bird. That might be a, a good technique you use to give uh, different shininess to different parts of a bird feather, for instance. So I really hope this was helpful in showing you some of the more advanced features in Inkscape and Inkstitch to get your embroidery projects looking the way you want them to. So if you have any video ideas slash topics you want us to cover, go ahead and comment down below and we'll get back to you. Anyways, please like this video if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.